The Doctor Who, our Hambra podcast. Real Doctor Who fans with real Doctor Who opinions. Hello and welcome to the Doctor Who Lumber podcast, episode 328 of the podcast. I am Brett, yet again going on a solo edition of the podcast. Solo but not forgotten, as my friends, the dynamic duo of Liam and Legion, are off time meddling in the time stream, trying to prevent the horrible Naimon petting incident from happening. Who knows if they will prevent that from happening, make it worse, or perhaps prevent themselves from ever existing. I guess only time will tell. In this episode of the Dr. Lumber podcast, I'm going to be going over the latest news from Big Finish uh, because I think there's some really interesting things to discuss there, as well as something that we'd previously discussed on a previous podcast surrounding, I guess you could say, free Big Finish? Question mark. So I'm going to uh, look at that and I will uh, give you uh, some of my thoughts about the whole situation as we get through there. But uh, as uh, you know, just to get things underway, let me pull up it. And this is going to be new series free. So just in case those of you that are wondering that uh, this is just a big Finnish centric podcast. Uh, uh, so on June 8th, uh, the day of my birth, and also Colin Baker, I guess if you're really that interested in that also. Uh, they d- announced, Big Finish announced, the Sirens of Time Revisited. This is celebrating the 25th, the 25 years of Doctor Who audio dramas from Big Finish Productions. The very first release gets a new director's cut. So this is quite interesting. The, you know, the uh, picture art looks like it has these uh 90 whatever dat uh audio whatever with all of the things the dialogue only the sfx so you know this is all of their early days stuff i'm not sure if this is how they still continue to do it i probably guess not but maybe so who knows except for people at Big Finish. So it says, for a quarter of a century, Big Finish Productions have been regularly releasing full cast audio adventures set in the worlds of Doctor Who, featuring the Doctors, companions, and monsters from across the eras of the BBC TV series. It all started in 1999 with The Sirens of Time, the debut installment in Big Finish's long-running main range. Oh, sorry, I... I don't know how I read that. It says monthly adventure range. Written and directed by Nick Briggs, The Sirens of Time features the 5th, 6th, and 7th Doctors teaming up against the deadly threat to Gallifrey. So uh, this is a celebratory anniversary for Big Finish, which I think this is really quite cool to do. I'm also kind of bummed about some of the things that they've done revolving around this uh, anniversary issue. I... One of my biggest problems was, is the, what is it? The, the, the sirens revisited that, that, uh, big 20 year, I think it was, was it their 20 year anniversary? I don't know. We've been doing this podcast for 10 years now and everything is kind of not blending together, but you know, you kind of lose track of time from time to time. Uh, that's not a pun. That was just horribly worded. Um, word vomit that came out of my mouth. Anyway, so it says to celebrate this special anniversary, Big Finish is excited to announce Doctor Who's The Siren of Time Redux. Oh, well, if it's anything like the uh, Apocalypse Now Redux, they'll have three different versions that they'll release over a period of so many years. Uh, You know, director's commentary, the actual uncut one, the uh, too hot, too spicy for the earbuds uh, redux or something like that. It'll be kind of interesting to see what happens. They do have three different versions that you can pick up, kind of, sort of. We'll get to that in a moment. It says remastered and re-edited from the original recording tapes. This is the new director's cut of the story where the first three episodes of the originals each focused on just one doctor. The new version intercuts now that that right there, this part right here is where things get really interesting. And this is why I really like the special big finish, you know, back when they used to do special releases, bonus stuff for fans, besides like, you know, a 10 minute short trip here or there. This is where, you know, 
I feel as though Big Finish was doing things for the fans, making money on the side. Now I feel as though it's all money and let's do things maybe as cheaply as possible. But uh, I get it. They're used to their seven, you know, the uppity ups might be used to their seven figure income and they don't want to um, lose out on any of that. Just a speculation, though. Uh, maybe just, you know, possibly some truth to that. Anyway, um, let's see. So, yeah, the new version intercuts between all of them for a more narratively satisfying experience. So, again, I'm really looking forward to this. I was kind of not thinking about picking this up. But with that right there, that has cemented my, you know, I desire to have this as part of my collection, especially because Sirens of Times, you know, it was an okay story. It was, it, I, I know it was the first one. I like the um, whole, you know, big finish, that that special documentary that they did about, you know, collaborating secretly in like Nick Briggs basement or something like that and trying to figure out how to do this whole thing, whether or not the, you know, Doctor Who was going to come back to TV or whatnot. I, I like that docu series thing, the CD that is available. Probably not anymore. I think I have it on CD. I can't remember. I've moved. I don't know where my stuff is right now. Anyway, it says the Sirens of Time Redux also features new sound design and music, and there's a brand new behind-the-scenes extra with Davidson, Baker, and McCoy reminiscing about their first ever big finish recordings and the 25 years of audio production since. So that's kind of interesting. So this is set to release on the 20 on the November 2024. So about the same time we are going to be getting, you know, part eight of Once in Future. So who knows? I wonder if the I would they dare intercut once in future with this? Is this why they're interesting? Hmm. The mind wanders. Uh, Nick Briggs says it is now over 25 years ago that we I went into the studio with Sirens of Time. That moment was as signified a big change in my life and was a real step up for the profile of Big Finish Productions. Obviously, especially since they were only really doing Benny stories and some of them were Doctor Who uh, novelizations that were basically they had to take Doctor Who out and just made them Benny stories, you know, at least for the first, I think, year or so of those ones. So anyway, that being said, we have the pre-orders available for the Sirens of Time. Now, there are two versions as time of recording that are sold out. They were probably sold out within seconds. Be curious to find out if Liam picked up either the gold or the platinum versions of this um, <laughs> because of just the limited quantities. So there are tiers of... Um, this. So the entry level tier, the bronze tier for Sirens of Time Redux is a download only plus the original version of the Sirens of Time on download for £12.99. There is unlimited amount of these because, well, obviously the um, <laughs> uh, it is download only. The silver edition, which is limited to 1,000 copies of the Sirens of Times, is on collector's edition CDs with both versions of the story on download also, plus extra audio interviews bonus track for $15.99, £15.99. Uh, gold, the limited edition, was available to only 150 copies, which is, at time of recording, sold out. It is on a souvenir collector's edition cassette and CD. I would not, you know, I know Legion is back into collecting, you know, vinyl and stuff like that. I, in the moving process, I've been, I've had a numerous collection of audio tapes and I am still torn at, do I donate them? Do I trash them? Because I will tell you, they're... They're about 25-ish years old. 
And uh, yeah, so it's one of those uh, me dilemmas. And so plus an extra audio interview or the extra audio interview and bonus tracks for £14.99. Again, unless one of the 150 people who probably most of them won't open it up. I guess the only way that they'd get this would be if uh, on audio download only. They uh, got all of these special features. The only way that you could probably listen to any of these extra bonus tracks and stuff like that would probably be if somebody were to upload them on some sort of pirate website. And then, of course, the Platinum uh, Series Edition, which is limited to 100 copies, you get prints of photos from the recording session, uh, Sirens of Time Redux on the Souvenir Collector's Edition cassette and CD, both versions available on download, plus extra audio interviews, bonus tracks for £65.99. Both those latter two are sold out. So that is those situations right there. I, I'm curious. So right at time of recording, the... Uh, silver edition, which is limited to 100 copies. I'm just going to see what this would cost me. It's £15.99. It says right now, for me, $20.43. If I click add to basket, what is that going to set me back for international shipping fee? Ah, so postage and packing and a pre-order charge. A freaking pre-order charge? What? Hmm. That be. Hmm. 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 I don't like that at all. You have it available for pre order, and there's a freaking pre order charge. All right. Well, anyway, so posting postage and packaging, I guess international. Oh, wait, I am not on my account. Oh, never mind. This could actually be uh, more than what. Let, let me go to my actual account. This was just kind of my uh, side account that I just look up stuff that I don't have anything tied to. So now let's actually find out when it recognizes me for our living in the United States, how much it is, because right now it, it's, it's plausible. Th this owning this thing is very plausible. So now let's go to my account to see what this pre-order charge is and how much it will cost to ship internationally. All right. Sirens of time redux. There we go. $20, 43 cents. Add to cart. Thank you. And oh, why does that just, okay, success. I, I, I understand. I got it into the basket. Would the stupid green sign go away now? All right. So no, it's the same thing. So postage and packaging of the silver edition of this is $3.89. And they are going to charge me a $6.39 pre-order charge. Sure. You know, I, I might as well just, you know what? I'm, I'm going to pick this up right now because who knows if they are going to change this stupid pre-order charge. I mean, what was it? When I did the whole, um, uh, on the previous Big Finish podcast where I picked up all of the um, classic Doctor Who to figure out what that would cost me to get all of the downloads only. It is $351.34. I click yes on bundle. And will they give me a pre-order charge for that? No, they won't. They only are... But all, but, but all of the... Oh my word. I hate this so much. All right. I'm going to. All right. Now I'm interested. Let's go to the collector's edition CD and find out what that would be. So, to own all of them on CD, $428. I'm going to just see what it would look like. Let's see if I got a pre order charge for this sucker. 
And the survey says, no. There, it's so the postage and packaging for the Sirens of Time Redux still three dollars eighty eighty three cents. Pre-order charge of six dollars thirty nine cents, and it says non discounted special delivery cost bundle postage subtotal of one hundred and seventeen dollars fifty four cents. So the only thing that gives me a pre-order charge is the Sirens of Times. Hmm. Ah. Oh. All right, a thousand of them. I I may have to pick this up. All right, all right. Uh, I I I hope this has been enjoyable for the listeners, as it has been, I guess, for me, sort of, kind of. Anyway, um, next I want to let's see. Oh, uh, Operation Werewolf. We got the uh, cover art. And uh, so this is one of the lost stories that I have pre-ordered. This is do the doctor, second doctor, Jamie and Zoe in France in 1066. Um, and <laughs> ooh, it is limited to 2000 copies. I'm not going to pick that up. I, ooh, uh, okay, now I'm going to see. Let, let's just pick this up. Let's just see if I get a pre-order charge for this sucker. Because now I'm fascinated by this. Super fascinated by this. No, uh, I have a post and packing charge for the uh, Operation Werewolf, but no pre-order charge. This just fascinates me. This is the oddest thing ever. Okay, fine. So we got a um, uh, cover art, which, again, I'm glad that they're gone. They've done away with the stupid... Um, what do I want to say? The watercolor cover art. I think that that has been just atrocious looking in all honesty. Um, we do have a little bit more information, at least from the last time I looked at this. So we have a written by Robert Kitts and Douglas Camfield, adapted by Jonathan Morris. And we have, let's see, who is in the cast, obviously, Michael Troughton, as I, I, ooh, I, I like that. I was, for some reason, I was not expecting that. Uh, I should have been, but Michael Troughton as a second doctor, not being voiced by Fraser Hines, who is just going to be Jamie. We have Wendy as Zoe. And then, of course, we have a couple other people here and there. Nobody that really sticks out to me personally, but uh, that's going to be quite interesting to see. I, I'm very excited for this Lost Stories. I hope they are better than some of the previous Lost Stories. Also, we have a, um, a goth opera cover art where we have uh, Nyssa with her fangs. We have the vampires there. And yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not going to go into that whatsoever. I already have that pre-ordered though. Very looking forward to that. And something that I think Liam is super over the fence for, over the wall for, over the hill about whatever he'd be over. It is the Susan Susan meets the war doctor. Caroline Ford starts at, at in, stars, sorry, stars in two new box sets of full cast audio dramas as Susan is reunited with her grandfather, but not the one she's ever known before. So this is Susan's war family ties, and it is which will be released in August of 2024. And then the next one, which is Susan's War Grandfather Time, uh, release date to be uh, determined at a later point in time. So this is going to be quite interesting. So the Family Times, Tides, and Father Time continue the story from the 2020 release of Susan's War. That box that features Susan meeting the Eighth Doctor at a time when he was reluctant to join the fight. Now they are brought together on a new mission for the Time Lord. She must come to terms with her grandfather being a very different man. The War Doctor is ready for battle. Which I will tell you, I, I kind of disagree. Even though he's called the War Doctor, it seems like throughout the War Doctor series, he has still been reluctant to really want to murder anybody. Like, you know, he was still the doctor. He just kept on like yelling at people, don't call me the doctor. So, yeah, 
Uh, very interested to see what that is. I know Liam is going to be over the moon for that. There we go. That's the, what I was looking for, over the moon. So Susan's War Family Tides features two stories, The Lost Son by Sarah Cassidy and The Golden Child Ball by Peter Angelides. So I'm just kind of curious, Sarah Cassidy, what has she done? Uh, mm, nothing except for this, The Lost Son. Okay. Okay. Um, not going to uh, complain. Just um, interesting. Uh, the next two that are going to be out in uh, TBA, which is Susan's War Grandfather Time, features the two stories, The Last of the Collards by David Llewellyn. Okay. Oh. Oh. This third one. This third one. Very interesting. You know, so it, you know, the quick synopsis is no Gallifreyan is safe from the time war. While the doctor resisted the call, his granddaughter Susan did her duty and signed up for the fight to, or sorry, sorry, signed up to fight the growing Dalek threat. So again, The Last of the Collards by David Llewellyn and the second story, The Vord Alliance by Andrew Smith. That, my friends, that is how you compel me. You have Andrew Smith. You have the Vord Alliance. Last the Collins, David Llewellyn. I, you know, you have well-known writers in the Big Finish audio range, and you have titles such as those: The Lost Son, eh, The Golden Child, Peter Angelides. I mean, again, still. Stories, you know, details to be found at a later date and time, probably. But uh, I don't know. I'm not sure about this uh, part two. I almost would like to just pick up part three only and see if I can skip part two. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. Uh, I cannot wait to get back in with Liam and discuss the excitement about that because I think there's going to be a, a, a lot to look forward to. I think 2025 is going to be a great year, especially as I think I'm taking a step away from New Who. That is the only New Who talk that I'm going to be bringing up here. Anyway, that being said, I want to move to something that we talked about at one point in time on the podcast and it is i've i've not wondered i just haven't really done the legwork to figure out what it is so ages ago one would probably say even i'm not sure if it was i think it was late 2023 we were podcasting and it was we were discussing big finished was going to put some of their audio dramas on podcast form. So on the 17th of February, 2024, it says Big Finish launches audio who uh, launches Doctor Who audio drama podcast. Classic Doctor audio dramas will be brought to new audiences with the Into the TARDIS. Now, and I, I feel as though that that is where some people are missing uh, find, being able to find these things because that is what it is called. I typed in Doctor Who, uh, Doctor Who Audios on uh, Apple Podcasts, couldn't find it. I typed in Big Finish, only saw the podcast, couldn't find it. You had to type in, not Doctor Who, into the TARDIS, and it came up. Now, granted, on the Big Finish uh, website, and I will have these linked into um, the description of uh, this podcast for those of you that would be interested in, but... Um, uh, there are some links on the uh, news announcement from February regarding uh, the the hyperlinks to you know Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and Acast, whatever that is. Um, but I, I so I found. Oh, sorry, let me rewind. 
so it was discussed on the podcast that the first one was going to be Death and the Queen, which is a 10th Doctor Donna story, which, again, I think the main reason why they, they did that is especially because of the re- return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate to the new series. So, again, trying to get new people to get into Big Finish the smartest way possible. That is what you do. You grab the biggest, most iconic duo and have that as your first you know, lead-in story. Now, you can listen to it commercial-free on um, through a subscription. I, well, I, uh, let me just, let me play the uh, commercial uh, or the introduction to this podcast right here. Hello, Colin Baker here. And you might better know me as the Sixth Doctor, or Old Sixy, as I like to call him. You can join me for a host of audio adventures throughout the lives of the Doctor, from the classic era to the new, as I invite you to listen to my new podcast, Into the TARDIS. Each episode will feature an exciting installment of full cast stories, officially licensed by the BBC and produced by Big Finish. So join me and step into the TARDIS wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And don't forget, there's more, much, much more at www.bigfinish.com. So yeah, uh, that is the uh, Into the TARDIS podcast with... uh, Big Finish audio dramas, very intriguing. I I might have to pick this up. But one of the neat things about this is you can... So as I'm looking at this on my uh, iPhone, we have the released March 27th, Death and the Queen Part 1. A week later, April 5th, Death and the Queen Part 2. So, you know, they split this one-hour episode up into two half-hour chunks. Which, okay, sure. Then what they did is they're trying to get people to jump and become a subscriber. So I'm not sure. So not only did they say that there is going to be, uh, you know, if you subscribe, you will be get it, given it to them, you um, commercial free. But now there's also subscriber audios available through this so again no um no commercials and then also special audios that you can only listen to if you subscribe to the into the tardis podcast so for example april 12th we had part one of energy of the daleks which is is a two-part story not you know one hour broken up into two and same day they release the further adventures of lucy miller Revolution Game Part 2. So I think that's kind of odd that it was uh, Part 2 right there. The next week, Energy of the Daleks Part 2 that was released to the public. Subscribers only, Doctor Who, Primoid, Primord Part 1, which those of you that are playing along with us and have been with us for quite some time, you will know that this is the one that me and Liam had an argument about and it got brought up kind of on Twitter, but then the discussion carried over to the about page on the big finish, uh, audio, not pre-order, but essentially the news portion of like the little tab or about, or interesting information, whatever they wanted to do regarding myself and Liam's argument that we had on a podcast that got brought to Twitter that then got further put onto the Big Finish website. So if you'd like to just check that out, go find Primord, which is, I think, a third, yeah, third Doctor Adventures. I can't remember which, uh, I want to say three or four, which this is. And yeah, um, that happened. Um, in... Um, the 26th of April, the, the June Jadoon in Chain, which is a six-part, I believe this is part of the Classic Doctor's New Monsters series, 
which is yeah, which was a six doctor story, was released on the twenty sixth of April. The following week, Prime Lord Part Three for subscribers special. Following yeah, you know, same time for everybody, Jadun and Chain Part Two. May tenth, Prime Lord Part Four for subscribers. Then May tenth. We got the first part of 1963 fanfare for the common men, which I believe is so. I I was curious if big why big finish didn't do anything special for the um, death chord or whatever it was called, the episode that uh, I did not watch because I had no interest in it, and then I watched some reviews on uh, YouTube about it, and I feel as though I missed nothing. Um. Anyway, that being said, I was kind of interested why they didn't do anything about it, but they did. They just did it on the Into the TARDIS, but they really didn't market that. Like Something that we've discussed numerous times, the lack of marketing from Big Finish. Anyway, uh, May 17th, Destination Wars, which is the first Doctor story. I can't remember. I, I think that's uh, one the uh, faux uh, David Bradley Doctor one. Again, so that's what they're kind of doing. I think that's kind of interesting to basically be releasing two things at a time. You can only listen to one of them if you are subscribing to the podcast, you know, paying basically a monthly fee. And then you get the other one generally for free with commercials. The interesting thing about the whole thing, though, is when you look at the time for the subscribers uh, only podcast or version of the uh, audio is it is a larger chunk than you would have expected. And so the question is, is are you just paying for an extra audio? You're still getting commercials. At least that's what it looks like. Again, as I look at these audios, you have, um, let me just find the Prime Ward. So Prime Ward part four is 41 minutes. So unless they're adding, you know, some of the behind the scenes stuff, like about five, 10 minutes, uh, chunk of the behind the scenes stuff, like they pack that full of possibly commercials that you're paying to listen to. Um, and the only reason why I say that is when you look at, you know, for example, the Jadun Chains part two, that is at 44 minutes. And again, that was a one hour episode that was chunked into uh, two parts. Oh, wait, was it? No, I, I sorry. I was thinking more like uh, Death and the Queen. Yeah, but so Death and the Queen, part one is 35 minutes. Part two is 41 minutes. So either they are adding the uh, extra behind the scene extended stuff or they have the subscriber part chunked with uh, commercials too. You just get an extra one for being a subscriber. I don't know. I'm not going to be a subscriber because I own all of those. To this point, actually, I don't think I own the first Doctor one because I think that's the uh, David Bradley and the people that look like people that I just refuse to watch or listen to. But that is a subscriber only, so I don't have to worry about that. Anyway, I think that's kind of interesting thing to look at. Um, but yeah, I think with Big Finish, there is so many things to be excited about. Again, uh, we have the classic Doctor's multi-buy pre-order stuff for 2025. I'd love to hear from you. Please email the show at alhambraaudio at gl gmail.com. That is a a l h a m b r a audio, all one word, at gmail.com. You can tweet the show at Alhambra Podcast. DMs are open. And until next time, I will see you in time. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra Podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at alambrapodcast. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A podcast. Thank you.